So, uh, during this uh, lecture session, uh, we will uh, continue uh, discussing uh, acceptance sampling. Uh, specifically, uh, during this lecture session, I will uh, discuss uh, performance measures of the sampling plants. And uh, whenever we talk about uh, performance measure of uh, sampling plants, uh, there are different types of uh, curves uh, we need to uh, draw. And uh, two important uh, curves in this particular uh, you know the case that is AOQ curve and uh, ATI curve uh, we will be discussing in detail. Uh, and how to construct AOQ curve as well as the ATI curve we will discuss and how to design a sampling plan uh, with numerical exercises we will be discussing during this lecture session. Okay. Uh, while you start using a sampling plan, you need to know how it is performing. That means, whether it fulfills the objective for which it is designed and used. We have already discussed uh, the objectives of using a sampling plan. And uh, while uh, you start using a sampling plan, uh, you must check, you must verify whether these objectives are being fulfilled or not and uh, uh, how is it performing, whether uh, it, it is serving the purpose or not. Now, in this context, a number of performance measures are recommended to be used. Right? There are altogether four performance measures. Okay. For the first one is the operating characteristics curves, that is uh, the first uh, performance measures we always refer to. The second one is average sample number curve. Now, these two curves or these two measures are used in normal situation. What is a normal situation? The normal situation means there is no rectifying inspection. We have already explained that uh, uh, what is this rectifying inspection and uh, why rectifying inspection uh, you may use. And uh, two more performance measures also uh, we, we refer to. The third one is the average outgoing quality curve and the fourth one is the average total inspection curve. Now, these uh, uh, the two measures uh, are used in special situation when rectifying inspection is enforced. So, uh, you, you say that uh, or you conclude that uh, whenever uh, uh, the rectifying inspection is in vogue or uh, is enforced, uh, the situation is a special kind. Okay, so, there are four measures. Now, uh, what is an operating characteristic curve O C curve? For a given lot, O C curve is a plot of probability of acceptance versus you know uh, uh, the P. What is P? P is basically uh, the incoming lot quality and, uh, and when you deal with the attributes data, uh, this incoming lot quality is measured uh, with uh, proportion and conforming. That is why the notation is P. So, essentially is a plot of P A versus P. For isolated single lot that uh, we are saying this is situation 1, the curve is referred to as type A O C curve. Is it okay? In all texts uh, uh, on uh, quality, you will find that this is referred to as the type A O C curve. And when you uh, deal with a series of lots or the stream of lots, uh, this is situation 2, the curve is referred to as type B O C curve. Is it okay? So, uh, in a uh, for constructing type A O C curve, uh, uh, your uh, distributional uh, assumption is uh, hypergeometric. This point already we have uh, uh, we have discussed for isolated uh, the single lot case, and uh, for uh, a, a series of uh, lots or the stream of lots case. Uh, you know, uh, while uh, you construct uh, the OC curve, we assume that uh, the, the distributions of the random variable is uh, assumed to be binomial. Before we elaborate on these curves, the concept of ideal OC curve 
must be understood right uh, what is it an ideal oc curve is presented as this one that means it is a plot of probability of acceptance versus proportion non conforming that means proportion non conforming uh, is essentially uh, uh, is the incoming uh, lot quality now here uh, what you you say that uh, we specify uh, the value of uh, proportion non conforming that is p0 and any value uh, of p less than or equals to p0 the lot is uh, lot quality is considered very good okay so that is your decision if p is less than or equals to p0 that means uh, the value of p proportion non conforming is less than or equals to p0 that means these are the values possible values what we assume that the probability of acceptance is 1 is it okay so this value is 1 probability of acceptance is 1 but uh, if so suppose uh, the proportion non conforming is greater than p0 then uh, the probability of acceptance is 0 is it okay so this is the ideal oc curve right that means uh, uh, this is uh, this is the curve the horizontal line and there is a break and uh, then uh, again you move around this uh, the line is it okay when the probability of acceptance becomes zero so a sampling plan with such an oc curve is 100% discriminatory in nature is it okay so you also must know that what is the ideal oc curve but when uh, uh, you draw a typical oc curve obviously the uh, you uh, you cannot get uh, or you you cannot get the ideal OC curve. So, in the ideal uh, OC curve uh, what you uh, what we assume that it is 100 percent discriminatory whereas, when you draw the actual OC curve or uh, when you get the real OC curve what you find that uh, uh, the curve nature is like this that means, against good quality that is P 1 against good quality the probability of acceptance p a is very high and that is 1 minus alpha. So, what is alpha? Alpha is uh, the producer's risk against bad quality that is p 2 okay, any value of p greater than or equals to p 2 is considered to be very very bad. The probability of acceptance p a is just uh, beta that means, uh, this is the consumer's risk that means, we have already mentioned. Now, uh, when you draw the OC, OC curve this is uh, it looks like an inverted S shape and uh, obviously, on these OC curves these are the two points that means, this is one point okay, uh, that is related to producer's risk and this is another point on the OC curve that is related to the consumer risk. Okay, so, that uh, uh, that you need to uh, identify these two values on the OC curve. Okay, so, uh, now what is the effect of sample size and acceptance number on OC curve like for a, a single uh, sampling plan for a single sampling plan there are two parameters given uh, capital N that is the lot size uh, there will be uh, uh, you know the sample size and there will be the acceptance number that is N small n and small c as the sample size increases with lot size and acceptance number remaining constants like say 3 cases we have considered over here like uh, in this case what happens. So, uh, you know for all these uh, 3 cases uh, the lot size as well as the acceptance number remain same that is 2002, 2002 and even for the third case it is 2002. Now, what is changing that means, uh, you are changing the sample size that means, as the sample size increases initially it was 50 the curve nature is like this when it becomes 100 it is becoming stiffer and uh, when uh, uh, it becomes 200 that means, it becomes further stiffer is it ok. That means, uh, if the curve becomes stiffer uh, it, it, it becomes uh, more discriminatory ok. So, uh, so this is uh, the effect of uh, say the acceptance uh, sample size on uh, the OC curve is it ok. Similarly, 
uh, what you can do that means uh, as the acceptance number decreases right with lot size and sample size remaining constant. So, here what you find we have considered uh, the four cases and for all these four cases what you find that the sample size as well as the lot size they remain same. Uh, whereas, uh, the sample uh, the acceptance number changes from 3 to 2 to 1 to 0. So, as uh, you as the acceptance number decreases with lot size and sample size remaining constant the OC curve becomes stiffer. Now, here c equals to 0 is a special case for which the OC curve is a convex function this is the convex function and hence cannot be used is it ok. So, uh, this is a very special case and usually you will find that the single sampling plan ok all sorts of single sampling plans which you use uh, the uh, the acceptance number is always greater than 0 is it ok. Whereas, in certain cases acceptance number has to be 0 and uh, for which a special purpose sampling plan called chain sampling plan you need to use. So, uh, in uh, uh, we will we'll refer to uh, this chain sampling plan when we discuss uh, the special purpose uh, sampling plans. If c equals to 0 we need to modify the sampling plan the recommended sampling plan is referred to as the chain sampling plan. Okay, so, this is uh, the way we uh, we analyze uh, the OC curve and now the, this is an example uh, how to uh, relate it to construction of an OC curve. Construct an OC curve for a single sampling plan where the lot size is 2000, the sample size is 50 and the acceptance number is 2. So, just you uh, follow these steps. So, what what are given basically that is uh, this uh, n value of capital N value of small n and value of c. The probability of lot acceptance is equivalent the probability of obtaining two or fewer non conforming items in the sample. Okay. So, this is the condition you impose the Poisson probability distribution is used to obtain the lot acceptance probability for different values of the proportion non conforming p. That means, even if you consider uh, say isolated lot a single lot or a series of lots okay, either hyper hyper geometric distribution or the binomial distribution is approximated with uh, the Poisson uh, distribution and that is why uh, uh, Poisson approximation to hyper geometric or the binomial distribution is uh, uh, is used. Okay. So, uh, if uh, value of p is 0 0.02 that means, the batch is 2 percent non conforming. So, n p is 50 that is the uh, sample size into 0 0.02 that is 1. The probability of p of accepting the lot is 0 0.920 that means, what you try to do you refer to cumulative Poisson distribution table against a value of uh, the lambda, lambda is basically n p. So, and uh, you, you say that what is the value of x you refer to Poisson uh, cumulative Poisson distribution table and the corresponding probability from the table uh, 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 from the table you get as 0 0.920. So, uh, this process is uh, this repeated several values of uh, the p possible values you consider and against uh, each value of p assuming Poisson approximation to binomial or hypermetric distribution. So, you calculate or you get the values of uh, the probability of acceptance. So, when you get uh, uh, the several values of uh, p, when you get several values of p for uh, uh, for different values of for several values of uh, uh, say uh, when you get several values of p uh, the corresponding probability of acceptance you you calculate and then you plot these uh, values values of the probability of acceptance and you get this OC curve is it ok. So, uh, please go through all these uh, uh, all these uh, the steps and uh, I am sure that you will be able to construct the OC curve by referring to cumulative Poisson distribution table. Only thing is uh, make sure uh, that uh, the, pos the, the values which you consider uh, that is uh, the values of proportion non conforming that you consider as uh, incoming lot quality 
uh, these uh, the values are acceptable to you is it okay so so you 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 have come to know that how to construct the oc curve the next one is average sample number curve so what is uh, average sample number that you must know average sample that number actually uh, when you define uh, we define uh, average sample number like this this is the average number of units inspected okay for a series of lots okay what actually you are inspecting you are inspecting the units in the sample against a particular lot so the several lots uh, you are considering you are getting series of lots and for each lot you are uh, the drawing one sample now when you consider the sufficient number of lots now you check that on an average how many units you are you are inspecting for a given incoming lot quality to make a decision so the decision could be either lot acceptance or lot rejection now this average number of units is referred to as average sample number or uh, asn now asn curve is a plot of asn versus p is it okay that means what you need to do against uh, a given value of small p incoming lot quality what how do you uh, you must get an expression for asn so with no curtailment of inspection this is a special case we are saying is a normal normal situation that means no curtailment of inspection asn for single sampling plan is simply n is it okay single sampling plan is n asn for the double sampling plan that means uh, you uh, uh, you say that uh, uh, that uh, the number of units you are going to inspect uh, when uh, uh, there is uh, probability of acceptance or rejection at the first stage if you cannot make a decision at the first stage then you go to the second stage and at the second stage you are you are uh, you know the inspecting n2 more units that's why it is n1 plus n2 at the second stage and what is the probability that there will be a decision taken at the second stage obviously it is 1 minus p1 so what is p1 that means the probability of making a decision either acceptance or rejection that means the probability that x could be less than equals to c1 that is uh, uh, you know the acceptance number for the first sample are uh, or it is a probability that x is greater than equals to r1 r1 is the rejection number for the first sample so now if it is a multiple sampling plan what is the expression for asn okay that is n1 into p1 plus n1 plus n2 into p2 that means the probability of making a decision at the second stage and similarly how many stages you consider in general there could be k number of stages so what is uh, p subscript k that is the probability of making a decisions at the k stage so uh, the k is the number of levels of samples and uh, p, uh, capital p subscript k is a, is probability of making a decision at the kth level is it okay so this is uh, uh, just a plot that means uh, asn uh, values are plotted against the proportion non conforming so for a single sampling plan this is an horizontal line and this value is n and uh, for a double sampling plan uh, the uh, nature of curve is like this and obviously the first sample size uh, for an equivalent double sampling plan okay that means you have a single sampling plan and if you opt for an equivalent double sampling plan what you find that uh, the first sample size uh, is uh, less than uh, the sample size for the single sampling plan so n1 uh, and uh, this is the typical nature and you have uh, the two values of uh, proportion non conforming that is p1 and p2 is it okay so uh, these values are uh, considered to be very good and these values beyond p2 are considered to be very very bad so for both the cases what you will find if the incoming lot quality is extremely good or extremely poor there is a high chance that uh, you will be you know uh, will be able to make a decision uh, based on uh, the first uh, first uh, sample size or the first sample 
Okay. Now, this is the special case that is the double sampling plan with cartilage inspection. So, this point means uh, whenever you go for cartilage inspection, uh, what you find that uh, on an average the number of units you are going to inspect for making a decision is expected to be uh, lesser. So, this is another example uh, related to average uh, sample number. For the double sampling plan n equals to 3000, n1 is equals to 40, c1 equals to 1, r1 equals to 4, n2 equals to 80, c2 equals to 3, r2 equals to 4. Find the average sample number for batches with the proportion non-conforming of 0 0.02 assuming no curtailment. So, all the steps are mentioned. So, please go through all the steps. I have already explained all the steps uh, the required for constructing an OC curve. Here, what you try to do that means against a specific value of uh, p that is p equals to 0 0.02, you need to calculate the ASN. So, ultimately uh, you uh, must uh, calculate that what is the probability of making a decision uh, that is uh, uh, that is this one uh, the p 1 is this that is 0 0.818 and uh, and immediately uh, 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 after uh, calculating p 1 you calculate asn and asn is 54.56 okay now you go through this interpretation right that means uh, what you will find that 80.9 percent of the time the decision is taken to uh, either accept the lot or reject the lot uh, based on the first sample. So, this is the typical examples related to ASN. Now, uh, the ASN values are calculated for several values of the proportion and conforming P in order to construct the ASN curve which is shown in figure. So, when you consider several values of P, you get several values of ASN, you plot these ASN values and you get the corresponding ASN curve. Now, next uh, we move to average outgoing quality curve AOQ curve and uh, you know that uh, AOQ curve you draw as a performance measure when uh, the rectifying inspection is in vogue. So, when rectifying inspection is in use, this curve is recommended I have already told you and, uh, and this curve uh, is used for assessing the goodness of a sampling plan like any other performance measures. Due to rectifying inspection, the average quality level of the batches leaving the inspection stage is expected to be improved. That is the sole purpose of uh, uh, instituting rectifying inspection uh, in, in acceptance sampling. So, the given capital N, small n, P and P A that is the probability of acceptance. How do you uh, get the expression for AOQ when SSP is used? SSP means single sampling plan. So, here you are getting a series of lots, a lot with incoming lot quality P, you can accept it. What is the probability of acceptance? That is P A. So, obviously, if you accept, you do not go for rectification. So, outgoing quality is also will be P. That means, if the incoming quality is P, outgoing quality also will be P. Now, supposing with the incoming lot quality of P, there is a possibility that uh, the lot may be rejected. Is it okay? So, as soon as uh, it is rejected, you go for rectifying inspection. That means, all the non-conforming units of the lot uh, okay, will be, uh, will be uh, you know, the removed and all the non-conforming units in the lot will be replaced with conforming lots. So, what you get ultimately when uh, uh, the lot, uh, lot is returned as, uh, with uh, rectifying inspection, the lot will not have any non-conforming units. So, obviously, the outgoing quality will be 0 in the sense that the proportion non-conforming will be 0. So, hence what will be the expression for AOQ that is P A into P into n minus n divided by capital N. Okay, so, when n is less than equals to significantly less than capital N and that is the case in majority of the uh, situations, you will find that the AOQ is approximately P A into P, but this is a very special case. Make sure that uh, the small n is significantly less than uh, the capital N. For different possible values of P, 
AOQ values can be obtained. The plot of AOQ versus P is called AOQ curve. Is it okay? So, this is a typical AOQ curve. So, the nature of a typical AOQ curve for a single sampling plan may be as follows. Like uh, here, uh, uh, you know, uh, as the incoming uh, lot uh, percent defective, or uh, so the increases. What happens that uh, uh, then the AOQ value increases at a certain, uh, and it increases up to a certain uh, uh, the level of P, and thereafter, as the quality deteriorates, you will find that AOQ value also uh, the decreases. So this is the typical shape. And against a particular value of P, you get uh, the maximum value of AOQ, and this is referred to as AOQL. So, AOQL is the average outgoing quality limit. So, it is the worst average quality that would leave the inspection stage while designing a sampling plant. So, this point is to be noted, the value of AOQL may be stipulated. Okay. So, we will referring to this case. Now, here is uh, an example. Uh, related to average outgoing quality curve AOQ curve. So, construct the AOQ curve for the sampling plan n equals to 2000, uh, small n equals to 50 and c equals to 2. So, all the steps are given that means, uh, against uh, say the value of p equals to 0, n p equals to will be 0 and corresponding probability of lot acceptance. If you refer to the cumulative Poisson distribution table, you will find uh, that uh, this probability is 1. Similarly, suppose uh, another value you have selected that is p equals to 0 0.03. So, n p will be 1.50 right? and uh, against uh, this value of lambda, n p is nothing but the lambda, uh, you refer to uh, x value of 2 in the cumulative Poisson distribution table, you get uh, the corresponding probability as 0 0.809. So, this process uh, you repeat and you get uh, uh, by the several values of uh, P A against uh, all sorts of possible values of P. Is it okay? So, that means, from 0 to 0 0.15 that is the range of uh, the values for small p and the corresponding uh, the P A values are like this. Then, what you do? You just uh, uh, plot these values probability of plot acceptance and uh, uh, once, once you have these P A values, then immediately you calculate uh, the AO ATI, is it okay? So, AOQ values by using that formula, is it okay? P A into P into capital N minus small n divided by capital N. So, against a value of P, you know what is the value of P A and uh, against the value of P A, you also can calculate what is the value of AOQ and then you plot the AOQ values against uh, uh, P. Okay? So, you get AOQ curve. What is the average total inspection curve? ATI is defined as the total number of units on an average you need to inspect per lot. When rectifying inspection is in vogue, ultimate decision regarding a lot is its acceptance. Hence, ATI refers to a situation where the lot is accepted only. Okay. Given an incoming lot quality P, how to determine ATI? for different types of sampling plans. Is it okay? Like uh, uh, we have done for uh, say AOQ, is it okay or ASN. Okay. For single sampling plan, ATI is N into P A, is it okay? That means, this is the probability of acceptance and if you cannot accept it, what do you do? That means, you reject the lot and the rejected lot goes through 100 percent uh, inspection that is rectifying inspection. and uh, so, obviously, you know all the uh, capital N number of units in the lot you are going to uh, going to inspect. So, that is why it is 1 minus P A into N. So, this is one event or this is another event and these two events are mutually exclusive. So, this is the expression for ATI for double sampling ply N 1 into P A 1 the probability of acceptance based on the first sample n 1 plus n 2 into p a 2 probability of acceptance based on the second sample and even uh, you go to the second stage you cannot uh, accept this uh, lot. That means, uh, you go for rectifying inspection. So, you are inspecting capital n number of units with the corresponding probability 1 minus p a 1 minus p a 2. 
So, a plot of ATI versus P is called an ATI curve. The typical shape of ATI curve looks as follows. Is it okay? So, this is a typical ATI curve. That means, here the minimum value is 50 and maximum value could be the lot size. Is it okay? And as uh, uh, you know uh, the quality incoming lot quality deteriorates, that means as the value of P increases, what happens? That means the ATI value starts increasing. Is it okay? So, this is a typical say the plot of uh, the ATI. So, here is an example, right. So, uh, for the given sampling single sampling plan capital N equals to 2000, small n equals to 50 and C equals to 2. So, how to uh, against a particular value of P say P is equals to 0 0.02 you need to calculate the ATI. Is it okay? So, you just apply the formula you get a value of 206. Okay. So, we have already uh, derived the expressions for ATI for the single sampling plan and uh, this value is known that means, uh, you uh, you get this value of probability acceptance okay, by referring to the cumulative Poisson distribution table and that value is 0 0.920. So, it is, is 1 minus P A uh, into 2000 minus 50 that is 206 is it ok. So, for other values of P the ATI is found in the same manner and ultimately for different values of incoming lot quality that is P you get uh, the average total inspection and these values are plotted. So, this is a typical examples of ATI curve and uh, OC curve for a double sampling plan. So, this is the probability of acceptance based on the first sample this is probability of acceptance based on the second sample is it ok. So, you just follow these steps later on or we may be referring to certain numerical problems on this is it ok. That means, in the first stage you go to the second stage uh, the condition is when at the first stage the number of non conforming units is greater than x 1 and up to r 1 minus 1 is it ok x 1 and uh, obviously, at the second stage this should be less than equals to C 2 minus x 1 is it ok. So, everywhere that is why you know uh, you are going to accept the lot at the second stage. So, what is the total probability of acceptance that is P A 1 plus P A 2. So, for a TP for a uh, the double sampling plan what you try to do that means, you uh, compute the values of P A 1 for different values of P and you plot them plot those values. Similarly, you get the expressions of total probability of uh, acceptance and uh, against uh, all the values of P you uh, uh, calculate uh, uh, the total probability of acceptance and you plot them is it ok. So, this is so it is a plot of P A versus P as well as P A 1 versus P for a double sampling plan ok. So, you refer to this uh, the two textbooks 